Welcome to the first ever Torah Tuesday. We're sitting in my office at Prairie College in Three Hills, Alberta, where I am professor of Old Testament. And this is where I get to spend my days studying the Bible and finding ways to communicate it, both in writing and in the classroom. I totally love my job. I often call it the best job in the world. And I have been diving deep into the book of Exodus. The reason is because I'm writing a commentary for Baker Academic in their Baker Commentary on the Old Testament Pentateuch series on the book of Exodus. So you might be familiar with John Golden Gay's work on the Psalms. Um, he's also writing the Genesis commentary for that series, and I'm writing the Exodus commentary. But here's the problem. It's not going to be out until like 2025. And I'm learning really cool stuff every day as I work on the commentary, and I don't want to have to wait until 2025 to share it with you. So I've started this Torah Tuesday so that you can join me in learning from the Torah along the way. Before we dive in, for those who are not familiar with me, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the work that I already have out there that you don't have to wait until 2025 to read. So I did my dissertation at Wheat Wheaton College and I studied the command not to take the Lord's name in vain, and that's been published as Bearing Yahweh's Name at Sinai by Penn State University Press. That came out in 2018. Uh, just before that, I released this illustrated Exodus in Hebrew, which contains the entire Hebrew text of Exodus, along with these really beautiful illustrations by Keith Neely and my translation in English at the bottom of the page. So if you want to dive into the Torah and you're interested in starting with Exodus, that's a really fun resource for those who are learning Hebrew. Most people would probably know me for this book that was released in 2019, Bearing God's Name, Why Sinai Still Matters. This is put out by InterVarsity Press. And this book traces the theme of bearing God's name through the entire Bible, but it spends a lot of time at Sinai. It's a re-presentation of the things that I learned when I did my doctorate. And so it's got this, this is the research behind it, but it's re-presented, re-expressed for non-scholars for the church at large. I'm working on two more projects right now that relate to the Torah. So the first is the Exodus commentary that I already mentioned, and the second is a companion volume to this book on being God's image. It's going to focus on the early chapters of Genesis and then trace the theme of being God's image through the entire Bible as well. So I'm in the Torah every day, one way or another, for one project or another, and learning so much and excited to share it with you. So today I'll just start with one insight that you might not notice if you're reading your Bibles in English, you would miss this. The very first verse of Exodus 1 begins with the word, and. And these are the names of the sons of Israel. So what's the significance of that? The author is telling us right, right out of the gate that this book is connected to Genesis, that Exodus is not a standalone story, but that it continues the narrative that was begun in Genesis. And we see this in lots of ways as the Exodus narrative is connecting back using the same key themes and key words and carrying forward the storyline. So here's one example. In Exodus 1 verse 7, it reads this, But as for the sons of Israel, they were fruitful and swarmed, and they multiplied and grew exceedingly strong, so the earth was filled with them. If you're familiar with Genesis chapter 1, you'd recognize that language from the creation mandate where God tells the humans what their job is after he's created them. He says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. So same key words there, the fruitful, multiply, earth, earth filling the earth. All is repeated, plus the word swarmed, which is the word that's used in Genesis 1, 20 and 21 to describe what the fish and the birds are going to do as they multiply. They're going to swarm. So right off the bat, we see that this story is fulfilling what God had designed in Genesis for humanity to do. However, there's a problem because in Exodus chapter 1, God's creation design is inverted there are lots and lots of Israelites, good, but they're supposed to be filling the earth and subduing it. And instead they are being subdued 
by the oppressive rule of the Egyptian system. So there's a problem in the fulfillment of the creation mandate, and we can see that God will step in and do something about this problem as the story unfolds. So that's our tidbit for today. Check back again next week for a new video. And if you liked this one, share it with a friend, like and subscribe so you make sure you don't miss any in the future. Thanks for joining me.